Here we go. No one. I can't believe it. Cheers. E buggy, we're done. Just kidding. Gary is trying to be funny. No shave, it's just a saying. Just a saying. What's Sistrunk doing here? I thought he quit. I thought he quit RC. So, what's the number today? When do we start? What's the magic number? We're at 25 right now. Phone is charged. Twenty-eight. Come on. When are you gonna make a Texas trip again? No idea. I do not know. Someone give me a number. When do we start this? I'm gonna work until we hit the number. Yes, Tyler, I got I got the guitar video. Great job. Merry Christmas, Adam. Magic number is 82. Wow, his Matt Harrison is really optimistic. He believes we're gonna get 82 people in here. I'm doubtful, it's Friday night. It's too early in uh, Europe. It's gonna be difficult. Sixty-nine, thirty-four. Thirty-four is probably more realistic. It's thirty-two now. Hey, you know what to do. Share, spam, smoke signals. Get people watching. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for sharing. How about two? You and Degani. Well, I'm not watching my own feed. I don't count. Today we're going to be talking about an incident that occurred RCTMZ and after that we're going to talk a bit about uh, a bit about 10 scale racing and then some setup and then after that Q&A okay SpaceX flight while stuck on I-10 I was just on the 10 too I saw some weird lights in the skies in the sky we only have one sky there were many lights. When in America? Drink America! See? Cheers. Digani cares, he's here. I think the magic number is 42. I think we're gonna have to start. Headache beer. Why is it headache beer? Let's start at 50. Okay, 50 is good. I like 50. It's going down. It's not good, folks. Are you leaving or sharing? I can't tell. Hola, David. Yes, I'll be in Arizona for Supercross. I can't remember which week it is, but I'll be there. I think it's the week after Reedy. Really. 
Oh, we're just not going to make 50. I'm not going to be able to tell you about all these things that, things that have happened. 27th. Yeah, that's the week after reading. Yep. I'm going 50. Well. Tommy Ketchup is in the house. Good. Tommy's one of those electric dildos. Good that he's here. Oh, Roxon. Yeah, let's hope Roxon wins. What happened there? It automatically started my video on my desktop. That's weird. Matt insulted me in his share, so maybe that will bring them. Good. It's going up. Thanks for sharing. Okay, so... Uh, let me just send a message here first. Take care of business. What are the cops outside in this world's dan most dangerous country? Okay. So, what was I going to say first? Oh yeah, I got a surprise in the mail. That's first. So Christmas came early. As you know, we're doing this Scrap Your Crap program. Basically, we're accepting your shitty cars and we're giving you a $150 discount when you buy a new black or gray edition. Except for Durango's. And guess what I got in the mail? Here's Dick. Dick the Durango. And it gets better. Doris, his wife. So I got a couple of Durangos in the mail today. And that, my friends, makes me extremely happy. $200 each. So this guy who sent me these Durangos just saved $400. $400? For these, <laughs> that's crazy. These things are discontinued. You know, you can't sell these if you try. But hey, JQ Racing, we accept all Durangos. So Dick and Doris find a new home. I can't say that they're in very good shape. I mean, this guy, this guy hasn't really taken care of them very well, but I'll be sure to take care of them extremely well so that that was that was my first uh, piece of news I wanted to share with you a couple of Durangos I got in so we're still doing the scrap your crap what's so special about the team Durango well you're gonna have to google hobby Call JQ racing and I'm sure you can find the answer there just check last year's news if I fly over can I poo on them says Tyler Henderson Yes, you can. Just fly over California and we can make it happen. What are you going to do with them? Well, at this point, I'm just collecting them. And later on, you'll see a video. Uh, yeah, you remember. Wasn't Wednesday fun? No, it wasn't. It actually wasn't very fun. We don't talk about Wednesday, but good you're here. We're going to talk about electric in a minute. First we have to go East Coast. See, I wasn't going to touch on this. I wasn't going to say anything. But then it occurred to me that I need to address this hypocrisy. I, I just, I can't stand it. There's two lessons to be learned here. So this story involves these two dildos on the East Coast. Uh, they have this uh, Facebook Live thing they like to do. Now, I didn't watch it, but I was tagged in a post today uh, where they were discussing what happened. Now, bear with me. Apparently, there's a video on YouTube where a person who shall remain nameless, I can't name his name because I, I got a Facebook official warning today. 
I wrote a post mentioning him by name and uh, it was removed because obviously this person complained to Facebook and Facebook put me on probation, put me on notice. So this Captain Club Race, uh, we, could, we could call him Captain Club Race for now or Chin Daddy or maybe Dr. Tech Tip from Mugenseiki.com. I mean, you can take your racing. Dr. Tech Tip uh, was mentioned on this, uh, this loop is, loop is lame, I think it's called. It's this Facebook live show they have, and these two East Coast dildos, and, and they were talking about a video on YouTube where Captain Club Race and his wife, or should I say boss, his boss, were doing this like MTV Cribs style uh, home invasion video. So there was some guy there filming uh, their home. And apparently there was one room which was all out of limits. Like you couldn't go there. I think I, I need to watch the video, but apparently it was, uh, it was referred to as a special room. It was a special room and no video cameras allowed. So now, Dr. Tech Tip was saying that this room was reserved for engine braking, I believe. This is what I have been told. But on this Facebook Live, these, these two guys were, these two hillbillies were speculating that maybe it was, in fact, some sort of Fifty Shades of Grey dungeon. That maybe on the calm and cool and collected kind of professional surface maybe underneath that maybe there was something more to the story so that I don't exactly know what they got into you know what what kind of strap-ons and sex wings and and stuff they were discussing I, I didn't hear the show you see what happened was that uh, Captain Club Race and his boss they complained phone calls were made Bridges were burned, friendships were destroyed, and this Facebook Live episode was deleted. The person in question who made the most raunchy jokes was uh, promptly fired, I believe, from this Facebook Live, and uh, was, he, he, let's say that he, he was reprimanded. And some phone calls were made, as I said. Well, anyway, the thing that gets me, the thing that gets me is that, first of all, you, 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 sh you can't be such a snowflake. If you're a public person on Facebook, let's, say, let's face it, if you're a public person on Facebook, people know you, then people are going to talk about you. And it's not all going to be good. Some is going to be good, some is going to be bad. I know. Throughout my life, I've always been made fun of. I don't know why. Today I asked the guy, why do I, why, he was making fun of me. So I said, listen, listen, brother, why are you making fun of me? I said, and he said, you're just so easy to make fun of. So I guess it's my own fault because I'm a bit of a retard, a bit of a silly, silly person and people find it hilarious to make fun of me. So I've just had to deal with this my whole life. But you know what? I've survived. Because I don't, like, I don't have an ego problem. I have a sense of humor. You know, I have, I think my self-esteem is decent. You know, I, I don't have a problem if people make fun of me. And I, I, I think this is one message to all of you out there. Like, don't worry what people say. Or like, worry more about actions. But what people say and what they talk about, who cares? Just don't be a snowflake. Don't, you can be offended, okay? It's okay. If someone says something rude or they make a joke you don't appreciate, you have every right to be offended. Just be offended. That's it. Just don't then be offended and take action. Don't start calling people and putting people in Facebook jail and this and that. And just, like, be offended, get over it, and that's it. Grow some thicker skin. That's lesson number one. 
Lesson number two, and this is the reason I mentioned this on this Facebook Live, is because I really can't stand the hypocrisy. You know why? My dear friend Gregory Degani, who is actually on this Facebook Live right now, we were in Vegas for the World Championships, and I was taking a shower. I was in the shower thinking, why do I suck so bad? What can I do to not suck so bad? That, that's what I was doing. And then he just broke into the bathroom. So there I was, mid-shower, and this fat bastard breaks into the bathroom. And I saw him, he was aiming his phone through the crack in the door. So I had a split second to make a decision. Uh, I was forced to make a split second decision, considering myself, JQ Racing, as a company, our future, what would be the best thing for me to do? Like, what should I do in this situation? Because I knew Degani is a complete asshole. If he gets a picture, he's gonna send it to everyone. So I figured the best thing to do would, would be to tuck. So I tucked my junk between my legs and Degani managed to get a picture and what everyone in the soon after saw was a beautiful mangina. Now, this is where the hypocrisy comes in. So, Chin Daddy's boss, she was one of the main players in the distribution of this minorly pornographic image of myself, yours truly. She would make memes. She would make, put, added some text, some really rude and offensive text to the image and then distributed amongst RC races via text message and other forms of media. Uh, she also commented on my Facebook lives and other Facebook posts about my tuck, tuck te technique and other such things. And I just somehow feel that it's, it's very hypocritical of her to on the other hand make fun of me in this extremely disrespectful way but then as soon as the tables are turned and these two East Coast hillbilly dildos poke some fun, fun at her and uh, Captain Club Race, then, oh no, this is outrageous. Outrageous, unacceptable, terrible, terrible. I, I just don't understand that. So on the one hand, JQ, yeah, free, make fun of JQ. But if, as soon as someone says something about them, done, you're done, just like courts. Done. So, don't be a snowflake. Don't be a hypocrite. I just wanted to say that. That's tuck, cover, and roll, says Degani. Well, I only had time for tuck. I covered after the picture was taken, and then I rolled, and as I was rolling, I slammed the door shut. Anyway. So that was, that was, there was some serious drama going on on Facebook. It's too bad I missed it. I, I wish I had actually seen that Facebook Live and so I knew what, what, exactly what everything was about. But there you have it. There you have it. Now, uh, do you see the shirt I'm wearing actually? Keep calm and let Lance handle it. At least you didn't get pantsed. What's that? He said duck, not tuck. Duck. That's funny as hell, man, he says. I heard people are getting docked from 65% team to 46 team. 46% team. Really? Why 46? Is it 69? Is it 69% maybe? Maybe that's what, something to do with the special room? I don't know. He's trying not to say names, Bobby, so he won't, won't, won't go to Facebook jail. Yes, exactly. Captain Club Race. Dr. Tech Tip. Chin Daddy. You know, I'm just trying to throw out hints here. Okay, so... Um, 
Oh, yeah, the, the shirt I'm wearing. I wanted to mention this too. You know, it's Christmas, so I thought I'd give a, give a shout out. So this, this guy, uh, Lancelot McDonald's, Lancelot McDonald's is uh, a hillbilly from the East Coast, the Carolinas in America. And he organizes these club races. He organizes these uh, eight scale buggy club races. And I attended one of his club races here. It was called the Fall Brawl. Now, he runs a pretty good show. So if you're ever, ever in the area, you should look, definitely look up uh, Lancelot McDonald's races because he's, he's going very European, you know. He, uh, he pretty much tries to organize the races so the racers can enjoy them. Uh, he has seeding, you know, so you seed it into the heats according to your skill level. So there's not someone, you know, who just bought a car and is like 17 seconds slower than you per lap in the same heat. So it's really good. Also, he, he almost has a schedule. Like, he, he posted this piece of paper where it said that we start at 7.30 and we're done at like 6. But, it, it, like, between that, there, there wasn't really any anything more than that. Like you didn't really know when you were going to run but it's a good start like you know when you start and you know when you finish that's that's good so Lancelot McDonald's is is definitely pushing that envelope here in America on the American racing scene also another thing I'd like to mention is that that he he ran the race very well there was a lot of people there but we were done in good time every evening and that meant that we could actually socialize like we could leave the track at a decent time. We could go out. We could have some food, some drinks. You know, we could actually, actually enjoy ourselves. So that was very good. I believe um, Fall Brawl was one of his races. Uh, and then, yeah, he's Lancelot. He lives in Florida. He just drives up to the Carolinas there and, and runs some races because the locals just don't have a clue, apparently. So Lancelot, he, that other series is something like use the force or something i i can't remember just google it you'll find it so anyway shout out to him keep calm and let lancelot handle it okay so next year i'm pretty sure he'll improve the schedule and add a few more uh, uh times there but uh yeah so far so good why are you talking so weird i don't know i was trying to be very official because i am on facebook probation Anyway, so we covered the East Coast dildos. We covered uh, Dick the Durango. I'm very happy about this, very happy. So we're still doing Scrap Your Crap. Don't forget that. Um, what else? Oh yeah, 10 scale. We have to talk about 10 scale. See, I mainly race 8 scale. I race two months of 10 scale a year and one or two races. So, December and January, I race 10 scale. Then, when I go back to Europe, I do the Euros, maybe, and maybe the Euros warm up. So, not a whole lot of 10 scale. So, most of the year, I'm running 8 scale. Real petrol head. 8 scale. The real deal. And then when I come to America, I can clearly see the difference between the 10 scale crowd and the 8 scale crowd because I haven't been around the 10 scale nerds the whole time. And this year I kind of paid a bit more attention to it and uh, I, have a few, I have a few pointers for these 10 scale guys. So basically, what I found is just two wheel drive, right? What? No. No, I run two and four wheel drive. I run full on associated cars. Yes. And I am drinking American. Look, when in America, drink America. Land of the free. You're going to start losing viewers. Yeah, because I'm talking about 10 scale. Well, all the 10 scale guys. Anyway, we have to talk about this because it's just. It's incredible. First of all, expert stock. What is expert? How can you have expert stock? Stock is like for beginners. Stock should be so slow that no expert would want to race it. Right? 
What the? Home of the snowflakes, exactly. You go to the 10 scale track, and it, basically it could be a study in snowflakes and OCD. So if there was a university, like a, someone was majoring in psychology, they could have a field trip to a 10 scale track just to study the people there, like matching pit mats and tools, all the tools set up like in the size order next to their fucking matching charger with that shortened black leads, charging leads, and um, their Louis Vuitton uh, wallet placed nicely next to the charger in perfect symmetry with their lipo bag. Jesus Christ. The drivers in the pits comparing their wiring, comparing their blacked blacked out wiring, shortened servo leads, everything placed perfectly in the car, you know, comparing each other's pink plastic pinion gears in expert stock. Jesus fucking Christ, give me a break. Expert stock. Did I mention that? Expert stock. How can you have expert stock? Makes no sense. Like a creationist scientist. Fuck. Stock should be re reserved for people who are starting out in the hobby, like kids, kids who start racing 10 scale, you know, who don't do that or shorten their servo leads, bullshit, you know, who just run it, run what you brown, you know, they race stock, okay. And then people who, who know what they're doing and have pink plastic pinion gears, they don't race stock, okay? They, what is their expert stock? Like, that is so stupid. That is the dumbest thing ever. Like, just have stock for beginners and make it really slow so no one who actually knows what they're doing even wants to race it because it's so slow and boring, okay? And then you have modified, and that's it. And you can have modified for like, Modified for that, like, I don't know, icicles, like the tough guy 10 scale races. And then you have like modified snowflake class for the kind of vaginas who cry a lot and, and complain if they don't win. So you can have two modified classes, that's fine. But make stock really slow and reserve it for the beginners. Andy, Andrew, uh, J, uh, confused Andy Smolnik, king of expert stock. Yeah, man. Stock is what makes the dollars. You know what? Modified would make more dollars if all the stock races just raced modified. Jesus Christ. Electric drivers, yeah. Just someone organize a, like, psychology university field trip to OCRC someday and just check out the people in there. It's ridiculous. I had a buggy racer that had crashed on the straight, order me not to go down the straight because he was afraid of getting run over. What? I had a buggy racer that had crashed on the straight, order me not to go down the straight because he was afraid of getting run over at OCRC. Gary, you race at OCRC? Exactly. Race gas like a man. Drink American beer, you know? Don't run pink pinion gears. Jesus Christ. Ten scale races. Anyway, let's move on. I actually did have a point. Because I like semi snowflake myself. I've been running ten scale. Wiring is pretty good too, but I didn't shorten my servo lead. I'm not that gay. Anyway. And then look, last club race, my speedo fell off, fell off too. That, that wasn't very good, but other than that, I've done a really good job. My wiring is, is very nice. Plugging my sponsor, LRP there. Very, very good. Like, definitely like almost in the crowd. So one thing I've noticed with these 10 scale snowflakes is that I, I didn't know this before. But more so than 8 scale, 
they really, really are psychophants. Let's look up the definition of that. It's like a really fancy word for like brown nose, basically. Let, let's look it up. Psychophant. A yes man, a bootlicker, brown noser, toady, flatter, flatterer, flunky, lackey, spaniel, doormat. A person who acts obsequiously. Obsequiously, we have to look up that too. Towards someone important in order to gain advantage. Okay. Well, these psychophants, they are prominent in 10 scale racing, more so than 8 scale. And I've realized that people really don't do what they want in 10 scale. They don't do what's best for them. And I'm going to try and change that. So. I've noticed that if your name isn't Ryan, then you're probably not super, super talented. Like we have Ryan Cavallari, we have Ryan Mayfield, you know, Ryan Rivkin, like all these Ryans, Ryan Lutz, all these Ryans are just enormously talented. And when they wheel a 10 scale, it's just incredible. Like 10 scale two wheel drive, you watch them drive, you like, Man, that car is dialed. Jesus Christ. How do they do that? That's what you're thinking. And then they post their setup online. And all the, like, mere mortals. Like, if you know, if you call Joseph, then you're pretty much fucked. I mean, you just didn't get the talent when you were born. You look at those setup sheets, you're like, yep, that's what you have to run. you got to run the Ryan setup. And, uh... What these people don't realize is that these Ryans, they are very, very good. So what they require from a car is different from what a normal idiot like me requires. Because I just don't have, I run out of talent. Let's be honest here. So there are a few things I've done to my B6 two-wheel drive to make it very easy to drive. It's a lot easier to drive than Cavallari's setup, which I started with. So I started with Cavallari's setup, went to the track. I just couldn't make, make a lap. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Eventually, I was able to make a lap, but I was really slow and inconsistent. And I called Cavallari and said, listen, listen, boss, there's something wrong with the setup you, you gave me. It's just, it's not working. And he was like, no, it's definitely the setup I gave you. And everything, everything, everything was right. So what I figured out was that these guys are just very good. And they push their cars to limits, which I'm not capable of doing because it's a knife edge. Like if you, if your inputs aren't perfect, then you're going to spin out or slide and lose time or whatever. So I made some changes. So I was at the track and there was this guy there, never met him before, some young kid. He was doing okay. I figured, okay, this is a good opportunity. I asked him what his name was and it wasn't Ryan. So I'm like, good. Okay, he's doing decent laps, and I want to try and see if my setups would help him. So, I just had basic B6. I'm like, okay, so on the front here, just long link, long link on the front. On the rear, on the hub over here, same thing, just go long link, just do that. He wasn't having it. He was one of these snowflakes, like, but Ryan runs short link, you know, Ryan this, fuck. For fuck's sake, can you just put the long link on the car? Just try it. It's like, no, but, you know, Brent, this, and Ryan, and Associated, and I'm like, oh, my fucking God. So I just took his car, and I made the change. So I, I just changed the links, gave the car back to him, so to just try it, okay? So he went up in the driver's stand, and he drove, and immediately posted same best lap as before, but then he did it twice more. Three times in a row he did, like, close to his best lap. You know why? Because his name wasn't Ryan. He wasn't able to drive that twitchy fast car as confidently and as fast and consistently as these Ryans do. So by making his car a bit easier and more forgiving, he was able to do his best more consistently. 
Now as he improves as a driver, then maybe he can be faster by going closer to a Ryan setup. But until then, he should run something a bit different. He should run something which is easier to drive. He should run something which, when I was explaining to Cavalieri about the long links, and he, uh, he didn't want to try it. I said, look, just try it. You know, I want to see what happens. Just can you please try it? He wasn't going to try it. And eventually, I convinced him to try it. And what happened? He didn't like it. He, his explanation was basically this in the face. Long links, it's like you turn the corner this way and you turn the corner that way and you're just losing time. It's slow. Exactly, it's slow. Everything the car does is slower. So idiots like me can react. I can drive smoothly around the track without making mistakes because I'm not, my name isn't Ryan, you know? I can't do it quick enough. I run out of talent, so I make the car easier to drive. So Ryan didn't like it because he liked the super fast car. He was able to wheel that around the track. Now this kid, whose name wasn't Ryan, he did better when he put longer links on. But because in 10 scale electric there's this thing where people don't do what's best for them, they just look, oh, but... <laughs> Associated and Brent and the official setup and uh, Ryan this and fuck that. Do what's best for you, okay? You fucking snowflake. Yeah. So I proved, yes, the long links wasn't very good for Ryan. But if you're not named Ryan, then they might well be good for you. So, long on the front, long on the rear, all the way long. And it's just going to make your two wheel much easier to drive. I did something else too. Front droop. More droop. Ryan's run like 21 mil of the shock shaft visible with the shock in the outer hole. Middle on tower, outside on arm. 21 mil. I ran 23. Ryan said I was an idiot. But for me, it was easier to drive. So there you go. Long link front, long link rear. More droop in the front, easy car to drive. Now that I've been running a bit more 10 scale, uh, I'm starting to get tired of this bastard at OCRC, the yellow devil, my nemesis Nick Miller. So next year, when I go back to the track, now that I can be consistent and I'm confident and comfortable with the car, I'm gonna try and make it a bit faster like natural, invisible speed, like I like to say. As a driver, I do the same thing, but the car is faster. So I'm gonna start experimenting with some, some things to be faster, but most of you out there that I see at the track who are all think you're the next world champion, and you've got the short and servo leads, and you sharpie everything black, and uh... Jesus, I could go on forever, but most of you, you really should just focus on two things. Make your car easy to drive and then practice driving without making mistakes for five minutes. If you can't do five minutes without making a mistake, then who cares what your best lap is, really? So until you can do five minutes, be consistent. Do within like two, three tenths of your best lap for five minutes. Don't worry about the Ryan setup. Run your own setup. So when you use your setup and lose, can they blame you? Can who blame me? Well, every time you lose, it's your own fault, you know? If I gave this car to someone good, they could still drive it. They would still be better than me. That's not the point. What did 23 Droop do? It was just more forgiving, easier to drive. I had more steering in the sweepers, but, and also less responsive. And that's, of course, what Ryans don't like. Amen, someone says. Uh, someone asked what else I've done. So every, most people tend to run like two 1.6s in the front, two 1.7s in the rear, something like that. I run the three 1.4 in the front, 30 weight oil, three 1.5 in the rear, 32 weight oil. And it's just more grip, easier to drive for me. So that's really the only major things. The long links, front and rear, uh, more droop in the front 
and the three 1.4s, 30 weight front, three 1.5s, 32 weight rear. Those changes were really the biggest thing for me. That really made it easier to drive. Ah, another thing. So, Associated comes standard with uh, 65 mil rear bones. Everyone was off. Oh, that's so 2016 JQ. You need to get to 2017. You need to run 67 bones. So I, I put them on and it was interesting. So the longer bones in the rear, basically the difference, I believe what I was told was that the joint is further out on the hub. It just made all the transition transitions smoother for the car. So it was easier to string together the corners, flow through, carry corner speed. The traction felt like it was more because it was smoother. So I really liked that. Felt like more rear grip, rear was more planted. I could connect the corners and maintain my speed easier. So other than that, I don't really run any option parts. I need to run the hard arms apparently, so I need to try that. And uh, yeah, and then I need to figure out how to meet, beat Nick Miller. Anyway, fuck this. Fuck the 10 scales. Now finally, if you have any questions, ask your questions now. Then I'll reply to them, and then I'll end this bullshit. Develop a setup that works for me. Exactly. Uh, JQ Racing, we have, we have both. So you can look at my setups, which are my personal ones that I run. And then we, we have the stock setup, which the stock setup is more of an easy setup to drive so I might run 15,000 or 20,000 in the center diff but the stock setup is 6,000. I might run a different hub position but the stock setup will have, will have the one which is the easiest to drive. So we have both. We have a stock setup which is easy and then we have my setup which is what I run at the races and basically Max Mert runs my setup, Degani runs my setup pretty much everyone has migrated to my setup because it's a very neutral, good, fast setup. Can you make a setup that fits me for every car on the market? Well, okay, let's explain this. Did you watch the rocket launch tonight? I did, I saw it, I was driving, I was like, what the hell is that? Suddenly there was a bright light in the sky it looked like someone cut the sky with a knife and it just started opening up and then there were like pieces of light. It was weird. Snowflake setup. Yes. Let me explain this real quick to you. Okay, this is the most valuable information coming now in the next few minutes. We have a hundred people. Don't go anywhere. I did this. It's not going to be easy, you muppet. No, this is not going to be easy. Explaining this is not going to be easy. You're right, Colin. I did another Facebook Live where I explained why some cars are always good and others are good on one track, then you go to another track and it sucks. I explained it there and I'm going to try and explain it again. But first I need some beer because this is going to be difficult. Luckily I have another one over here. How about that? Do you think driving 10 scale can help improve a driver's skill for 8 scale nitro? I do believe so. If you run a lot of 10 scale, then you go and drive 8 scale, it feels slower. It's like, yeah, it's pretty easy. That's how it feels to me. So I think 10 scale helps. Okay, here goes nothing. So a car that works on every track, such as the associated B6. The reason it works well, the front and the rear, the roll centers work together. So when you drive the car around the track, then it's going to roll, squat, dive. The chassis is going to move in certain ways going around the track. And within those limits, the front and the rear work in harmony. The theory behind the design it makes sense together. On a car 
that doesn't work well with the same setup on every track. It will work in harmony on one track because you've worked really hard on your home track to make it good. Then you go to a different track where the requirements are different for the car. The traction level is different. The type of corners are different. So the car will move in a different way. Now let's say it moves more, it rolls more, dives more, squats more. What happens then is a badly designed car, the front and the rear won't work in harmony anymore. The theory, the roll center movements, the camber changes, front versus rear, make it so maybe after you push it beyond the car's handling capabilities, the rear will do something out of the ordinary, you'll lose traction suddenly, or the front will be act stiff compared to the rear, or it won't work in harmony anymore. A well-designed car, what happens is when you push it beyond its limits, the front and the rear will be wrong in the same way. They will react to the conditions in a similar way, which means that it will still be balanced. So if the car slides, it will still slide controllably because both the front and rear will slide. So, or if something else happens, the steering will still be predictable. You, you will, you can feel, as a driver, you can feel what the car is doing wrong. Does it make sense what I'm trying to say? That when you push it beyond its limits, the front and the rear still work in harmony. Even though they are doing the wrong thing and you're losing time, they will do so together. That's the designer's job. The designer has to do that. So on a good car, the good basic setup will, will work on every track and you make small tweaks. And what you're trying to do with the cha setup changes from track to track is to always have the car roll and uh, dive and squat and move the chassis, move around the track in a similar way within the same range. And the reason I'm explaining this is I'm going to come to the di difference if your name is Ryan or Joseph. So Ryan is super talented. Joseph ran out of talent. So you have a good car. Works with the same setup on every track. The only thing you do is make changes to springs, sway bars, tires to get it to act the same on every track, every condition. The difference between Ryan and Joseph is Ryan likes the car to do all of that very quickly. So it rolls quickly, it turns quickly, it squares up quickly. So all the movements are fast and aggressive. And if you push the car very hard, like at the end of the straight, you just turn in super aggressive, the car will remain uh, stiff and respond quick and you have to quickly just respond with your steering or your throttle or your brake so you don't flip off the track. So you, you have to be very precise with the inputs as a driver. That's what Ryan likes. What Joseph likes is a car that's more forgiving. So everything happens a bit slower and it's not so knife edge. It's not so stiff. So before flying off the track, it rolls a bit. So Joseph has time to process that. Okay, my car is rolling right now, so I should probably do something before I fly off the track. And then, then I correct, and then I'm back. Now that's a tenth of a second right there. That's why Ryan is very, very fast. Because his car is fast, his inputs are perfect, and there wasn't that delay where yeah, I'm rolling right now, so uh, you should probably do something. Oh, okay. I didn't crash because uh, you saved the day. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what these guys don't understand. They look at Ryan's setup, and they think, that's what, well, that's what I need to be good. Yes, you kind of do. You don't have to. Like, Ty Tessman is one driver who, who likes a car that's all over the place. Like, whoa, I'm rolling, you know? He likes a forgiving car, but he will drive it within a limit that's fast. It takes skill to do that. So you can be fast with a car like that. But most drivers 
who are fast, they also have a fast car. It's like the, there's a famous quote, I think it's Andretti that said it, something like, if you're in complete control, then you're slow, or what was it? Let's, let's look it up. It was, it was good. It's, it's relevant to what I'm saying. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Here it is. Mario Andretti said, if everything seems under control, you're not going fast enough. You're not Mayfielding it. See, if you want to be truly fast, if you want to be world champion, then you just need to Mayfield it. So there. There was the best explanation I could give you of a good handling car, how you make setup changes to where the car will roll, squat, dive, move, chassis will move in, in within the same limits on all tracks, and how a great driver can have a car be more nervous, uh, act more stiff and responsive, be more knife edge where you get to a point and if you go over that there's very little warning and boom you lose the rear end or boom you flip over or boom you fly off the track and uh, if your name isn't Ryan like my name isn't then you need a bit of a warning you need more time to where uh oh shit's gonna hit the fan hello hey driver can you do something and then the driver fixes the issue so Long links for me, thank you very much. Easier to drive. I recommend you all try this. Except if you're Ryan, obviously. Ryan, just run Ryan's setup because it's pretty fast. Okay. When are you going to get laser surgery? Glasses are shit. So as being blind, with my luck, they would laser my eyes and I'd go blind. I am, I like to live life how God intended me to live. I do use extra uh, tools like glasses, that's acceptable, but modifying my eyes, that's just, that's not cool. So if you could change one thing about stock racing, what would it be? Well, didn't I already say? Stock racing should be so slow that no one with a sane no one with sanity who knows what they're doing would want to race stock racing because it's so slow. That's what it should be. It should be an entry-level class. Stock. Cheap, good for beginners, then you progress and you run modified. That's what I think. Joseph, you're a legend. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. There was some other thing I was going to say. So, setup depends on track conditions and also the driver's style. Exactly. Style and talent level. Skill level. Yes. As I improve as a driver, my setup will also change. And believe me, I am still improving. I am still improving. Huomenta Juha. Mitä Suomeen kuuluu? Kylmää varmaan. Just change the name to novice. Problem solved. You're gonna win Nitro Challenge this year? Yeah. I don't think so. I just, I'll be happy if I qualify directly into the main. Qualify in the main and mix it up with those guys for a bit. That would be good. What's the difference on track between your Black Edition stock setup defaults and the oils you run? The stock setup is just easier to drive. It's like, for me, it's, yeah, it's also easier, I guess, but it's slower. So you have less drive, less acceleration. Rear has more traction when, you, uh, when you're on power. So yeah, just handles bumps better. Doesn't accelerate as fast. 
just easier. Oh, yeah, another thing. Stock, you can't be sponsored. Just make it so if you have any kind of sponsorship deal, just you can't run stock. You know? It's the point. Like, if you're sponsored, you race modified with the big boys. If you're sponsored, you can't race stock. Dummy. Stock is for people who are not sponsored and can't drive. Okay? That's another thing. I do not understand this. I just don't. If you buy something, I bought this beer. Okay? If I sign a contract with Budweiser, that I get a discount from Budweiser, and I, I have to buy Budweiser, like, I can only drink Budweiser, but I get a discount, then am I sponsored by Budweiser? It, it just, it doesn't make sense to me, like, so for two years now, I have to drink Budweiser because I get a discount from Budweiser. I'm still buying my beer, but I have to buy and drink Budweiser for two years because I signed this contract. It's the dumbest thing ever. That's why we don't have contracts, cheeky racing. Like, yeah, we give out discounts to people and team driver this, and yeah, welcome to the team, you know, because everyone does it, we have to. But we don't have contracts. If I'm not paying you, then you don't have a contract. What good is it anyway? Someone else gives you a better deal and you'll just leave. What am I going to do? Sue you? So wait, destroying the world, printing too much paper. Worthless contracts. Yeah. Anyway. I would shoot myself if I had to drink that piss. You know what? I have Asahi too. I have Asahi downstairs. I think I'm going to finish this and have an Asahi. Then I'm going to write some emails and uh, process some orders. Chop in. How are you doing? Anyway, I think we're done here. I can't think of anything else to say. So we covered the East Coast dildos. They had this Facebook show and they were talking crap about Dr. Tech Tip and his boss. If you missed that, just go back to the beginning of this show. When am I coming back to the drag races? I don't know, Barry, have you been attending? I don't know when I'll be back there. Um, we covered uh, Lancelot McDonald's. He lives in Florida. He runs the Fall Brawl. He's getting pretty European. I recommend you go to his uh, races. They're pretty good. He almost has a schedule. Well, we covered, we covered the 10 scale snowflakes guys who were, you know, comparing shortened servo leads and pink plastic pinions in this fucking skinny jeans. Jesus Christ. With their caramel mocha, double whatever, I don't know what the size is called, uh, Starbucks on the table. Ten scale is just ridiculous. Somebody organize that psych, psych, psychology field trip, please. I want to see the results. Anyway, if there aren't any good questions, then let's just end this. I have shit to do. Obviously nothing very interesting. I mean, it's, I know it's Friday night and all that, you know. Not much magic going on here. Am I racing Christmas Day? No, I'm not. Next time I'm... Gonna race is uh, January. That's a bit of a break here. Is no one gonna end this? Can you can you please fucking end this? If there are no questions, can someone just end the misery? Lancelot is stepping away from announcing. I'm sure he'll be around. Have you run the low rear B6 ball stud mount like sanding the rear? On the inside? I was actually thinking about doing that. Also on the front. 
I haven't run it. No, I'll uh, I'll look into that. I need to be beat uh, Miller, my nemesis. So I'll try everything. I'll throw everything at it. Anyway, e buggy. Merry Christmas. Remember, thick skin, and don't be a hypocrite. Please. Peace.